up, witches? It's Witch Angel Nakora, and welcome back to High Slot Friends Sim. Last episode, we took on Nikki's ride of this amazing visual novel. And today, we're gonna hop back on in to Volume 17. Let's go hang out with Dariah John Jack. <clears throat> your feet drag as you walk, every limb heavy and slow. Your thoughts are cloudy and dull. Your palm husk is filled with unanswered texts. You feel guilty about this in the back of your mind where real feelings live crammed together because the front of your mind is too busy being lethargic and numb. Being a bad friend goes against the core tenets of your beliefs, but answering texts just seems like too much effort. Not sure where this particular malaise come, came from, but just that the usual friend-making enemas that drives you is still there. But doesn't feel like strong enough to overcome how tired you are of everything else. You can't quite remember how it felt to care that much about companionship and camaraderie. In fact, right now you can't remember how it felt to care about much of anything. Your thoughts drift to fantasies of driving your car into the uninhabited alternative desert until you run out of fuel and perhaps letting the sun have its way with you. It could be part of that feeling that you. Almost made all the friends there are to make, and there's little left for you to do on this planet. It can be weeks of trauma catching up and sneaking you into depression to protect you about from thinking about it all. Either way, it just feels like so much effort to do anything that you just sort of welcome oblivion if it showed up right now to offer its golden embrace. Your listless walking can take you into a familiar neighborhood. Oh, this is the really part of town. You smile as you reminisce. Sweet memories peeking through like beams of sunlight through the, fo through the fog of your apathy. Not far from here is Malik's Hive, with all its hacking equipment and charming upper middle class atmosphere of entitlement and complacence makes with vaguely socially aware concern. And although you've seen pictures of it on Chitter, you know that Rumley's hipster art studio slash hive is also in the neighborhood. And one block over is our daughter's place, which gave you, you your gruesome and troubling introduction into Alternian social mores. One taught you love, one taught you patience, one taught you pain, or something like that. Current meme! The high of your closest to is actually Elwards. And as you shamble closer, you realize there's a lot of other trolls seeming converging here, too. Pushing out your palm husk, you see that the unread message from Elward is an invitation to a party at her place. Ooh, we get to see Elward again! One of my favorite Ceruleans! The lesbian Cerulean! <clears throat> Looking around you, you feel a flame with your old desire to meet and greet rekindling in your heart. There are plenty of trolls here that you haven't met yet. Plenty of opportunities for friendship. The now growing fire in your belly feels a little artificial, like someone has just injected you with friend-making hormones to flood out your regular human melancholy. But you're not going to complain because this is vastly preferable. Also, did you notice in the bottom right, bottom left hand corner, there's a troll face down in its own vomit. As you briskly, uh, walking briskly towards Elward's hive, it's not a troll looking in the shadows by Elward's back door. Curious, you approach, and when you get closer, you can spot the jade green in her outfit. Although there's not much of her blood color in comparison to what mo other trolls seem to sport, because she's mostly wearing black and spikes and black spikes. Ugh, you. Guess it makes sense you'd be here. You're probably friends with Elward, huh? Whatever. Yeah, you're friends with Elward, but you just didn't come here for the party. You're just in the neighborhood. Try to make Daria's disaffected slouch. It's not hard as you can just channel the you from about 60 seconds ago who's very disaffected indeed. From the approving arch of Daria's eyebrow, I think you're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, parties are lame. Those parties are anyway. This one might be cool. Elward's pretty cool. I mean, she seems alright. I don't think that, I don't think she's that cool. I think her hair and clothes and personality don't completely suck us all. You technically don't comment on the green blush of Daria's cheeks when she's talking about Elward. Nor the way she keeps glancing at the door like she's hoping someone will invite her in. She's clearly trying to sneak into this party and doesn't have an invite. When a branch snaps in the bushes, Daria startles and looks around shiftly. I wonder if she's supposed to be out on her own this far from the caverns is all. I'm not a baby like Wanshi. What if I snuck out? 
Cloister rules are so lame. Bronia is so lame. I can't believe Elward used to hang out with her. But I guess if she hadn't befriended Bronia, that I never would have met her. Proud of me and not Jade Bloods in the caverns. All the time you're underground with nothing but loose side and grubs and the same stupid jades every day. <laughs> Sucked down there. The ride's imitation grub horn bracelets clunk as she folds her arms over her chest. Her heavy makeup makes it look like she, her eyes are twin black holes. We're all sense of fun and caring about things when I go to die. She's giving you a marked contrast from how Bronya talked about the caverns. What, what the peace and quiet and safety they offered compared to Alternia's surface. No, then, that time that Lanera nearly killed you in a cave. That time you were nearly trampled by a rampaging Lucis. You remember liking the caverns. <laughs> you would think that. You know what? I thought you might be cool. You might be friends with Elward, but you're also friends with, ugh, Bronya and Lanera. The two most boring trolls on the planet. Can't help but feel slightly defensive of your of your friend. Sure, Lanera is Lanera, and but you wouldn't call her boring. And Bronya is very fond of rules. It's true, but she can hang. Ugh, whatever. This conversation is this conversation is dumb. I don't care if you can't get me into the party. Nothing matters anyway. Just make your stupid choice and get on with it. Uh, party hard. Eh, what the hell? It's not your job to keep anyone in line, and it's not like I have a great understanding of why even the older Jade Bloods need to stay underground anyway. If Daria wants to sneak into parties and get into trouble, who are you to say no? Daria expresses no pleasure at your decision to get her into the party. She just shrugs and rolls her eyes. You shrug and roll your eyes back. You can play the, dis the role of disaffected teen with the best of them. Take her around to the front door. Hey, well, you're looking forward to seeing Elward again. When you met her, you didn't have as nearly as many friends as you do now. And in retrospect, you know you came off as kind of sif sycophantic. Wouldn't it be great if you could introduce Elward to the new popular and knowledgeable you? As you're walking up the steps, a huge shadow dwarfs y yours. See, childhood of old... <gasps> oh, it's my girl, Childhood! Yes! Childhood of all trolls grinning above you. Yo! It's my favorite purple blood next to... Oh, God. I am just gushing right now because I love Childhood. She is my bae. Well, hey, little one. I remember you. This is, who's this new little one you got with you? Childhood switches her interest from you to Daria, grinning down at her. Daria isn't huge for a jade blood or anything, but she seems absurdly tiny with Childhood looking down at her like that. Her face it, remains impassive and bored, but she scuffs one of her big black boots on the ground and twists one of her specky bracelets around on her wrist. Cute. Don't see many little jades outside the caverns. Boys. It found Greeny fascinating, too, so devoted to the continuation of the species. What a holy mission. Childhood moves slow and lazily, like she has all the time in the world and no conceivable reason to rush. She reaches out to pat Daria's shoulder. She lets her hand linger, one claw resting against Daria's neck. And Daria looks like me whenever I'm outside and someone tries to, like, put, my, put their hand on my back, like, Get the F away from me, you're creeping me out. <sighs> Ain't it a dangerous proposition to be so far away from your green brothers and sisters? Unless you're hiding something in those pretty veins. A slimy chill runs down your spine. Daria seems frozen to the spot, staring straight ahead at Childhood's bosom in front of her. You think Childhood is joking, but it'd be hard to tell with clowns. The humor is just so much more highbrow than everyone else's. Agreed, especially with Marvis. That dude is like awesome. Childhood, Marvis, and Karako are my three favorite purple bloods. Just joking. This looks like a good party. Even if Elward is too blasphemous for my taste sometimes. See both you little ones inside. And then she ambles away, bending down to duck inside the door to the party. Hear party sounds, music and laughter, and clinking drinks, and what could be the sound of being, someone being murdered, which qualifies as party noise on this planet. Then the door swings shut again, and you and Daria look at each other. Daria's heavy makeup can, can make it hard to read her expression, but you can tell she's still rattled. Uh, you know what? 
It looks like this party is still the lame conformers. Let's hide bloods and bury into the system and do what they're told. Even Elward. We can find something better to do somewhere else. Yeah, the hell with this party! You're down to find something you can find your own fun? Especially if that means not putting the riot in the way of potentially murder happy clowns. As you saunter away from the party, you realize that Daria is looking at you expectantly. Well, got this reputation for being all unconventional and weird and rebellious. Everyone seems to think that you're, like, totally frickin' with the conventions of society or whatever. You got any suggestions for cool stuff to do? God, you sure felt a lot of pressure to be quirky and swore despite your, about your manic pixie dream alien ways. It's not like you're trying to be a vehicle for other characters to project onto, assisting in character growth and insight for those around you while your impulse decisions and carefree ways <sighs> somehow keep yourself stagnant forever unchanged. It just seems to somehow sometimes be like that. Anyway, you're tired and it's daunting to have a punk team expecting you to come up with some suggestions for some cool stuff. You have a feeling that she's going to shoot down whatever you suggest. You rack your brain trying to think of anywhere from your many adventures that Daria might like. Your think pan comes up with zilch and squat and starting to look bored with you. Confessing that you can't think of anything is probably an option if you want Daria to be your friend. And exhausted and disillusioned as you fill with your socialite routine, you like her and what you want to bond. Um... Dunno, what do you want to do? You tell Daria that you have no ideas for cool things because everything on this planet is lame, but she's from here. Does she, does she, doesn't she have any non lame places to go? Ugh, I told you, I'm stuck underground all the time. It's not my fault I'm literally sheltered and never get to do any fun. Oops, maybe this was the wrong approach. She seems pissed at you, but then Daria sighs loudly and uncrosses her arms from her chest. I do want to. I do know one place is pretty alright, I guess. Better than here, anyway. Far, though. Not a problem! You got wheels! You're walking around the neighborhood because, well, you felt lifeless and glum and your car needs alien fuel. But you've been reluctant, reluctant to ask someone how to get because you don't want to be told it runs on grub grease or something like that. But now you have purpose again, and you're more than willing to provide transportation in service of your new friendship goal. Take the ride to your car a few a few blocks away and she directs you where to go. Drive through neighborhood after neighborhood, through the yellow blood slums where you met Foku and Kuprum, the busy urban sector where you had in adventures with Tagora, and the austere indigo blood enclave or gala cliffs. Eventually, as the buildings get sparse and you think about how you were yearning to drive out into the barren landscape and not die, maybe, but stop. Just let it all end. I don't think Daria would take you all the way out here just for you both to meet sweet Oblivion. But who knows, trolls be kind of hard to predict. And by the way, is that little bobblehead supposed to be like a Shovel Knight reference? Just when you think you've reached a point where there can't be more city or suburb, suburbs left, a rubble of massive old buildings come into view. It almost looks like a miniature version of the main Alternian city you're used to. Except it's all abandoned and mostly ruined. Nothing out here looks inhabitable. Rumor has it that some of the trolls who lived here pissed off a condes. So she called this whole town. That would have been way back in the day. It's ancient history now. If there are any survivors, I guess they'd either be dead or up in space. Anyway, these old buildings are kind of sick. There's never anyone else here, and I'm into that. Drive until she tells you to stop in front of a huge crumbling building. And even though this thing is half gone, you can still tell it's a mall. It seems a bit different from the mall you, vis you visited with Polipa. In the, even aside from the fact that it's totally dark and there's no one inside it. It seems more old fashioned, like, like more like one of your familiar Earth malls. Every dystopian movie that you've ever seen has taught you to be extremely wary of abandoned malls. You feel pretty nervous as Daria takes you up the rickety frozen escalator. It's so dark you can barely see your hand in front of your face. You're not trying to show your fear, because you don't want to look like a total wuss in front of Daria. But you can't hold back a whimper when your foot lands on a step that makes a distinctive bout to collapse noise. Don't be scared. Okay, I've fun over this place a thousand times and, and then it isn't already disintegrated. It's sturdy enough. There's no risk of calling out here, because, well, everyone's already being called. 
She's gentler towards you than you would have expected, given her given her cynical and specky demeanor. You swallow your fear as you reach the top of the escalator and tell her it's chill. You just have some horror movie associations. Doraya turns and pats you stiffly on the arm. You never tell her this, but her reassuring manner is... Once she knows someone is in distress, kind of reminds you of Bronya. <sighs> it's worth it when you get to the cool part. Come on. Oh, I like her. Stuff continues to be dark for a while, although you see some light up ahead. As you get closer, the hall opens up into a food court, and you see that the light is moonlight shining through the mostly absent roof. And Daria was right. There is something extremely surreal and cool about a decrepit, empty food court with a roof caved in. Rubble sit at the top cafeteria tables and plastic food trays that are scattered on the floor. And, okay, that might be the remains of a troll skeleton, still wearing a, still wearing a mostly disintegrated fast food uniform. Which is less cool, it makes you remember that this place is abandoned because the contest sent drones here to murder everyone. You wanna know the weirdest thing about this mall? Seems like actual adults maybe used to work here. I do a lot of stars, and some of them are for adult sized things. And there's just a surf for just like. stuff the drones bring you now. There's army supplies for going off world, too. And this mall was for adults because it must be really freaking ancient. Jeez, has it really been that long since there were any adults on this planet? Even after all your time in Alternia, that still kind of freaks you out. What would that be like to grow up entirely without adults? To live on a planet that's nothing but kids? Dariah gives you a weird look. Uh, what would what it be like to even have adults down here, too? It sounds way more dangerous than stupid. It's not like we're all wrigglers. Trolls have to grow that mindset pretty fast. People have responsibilities or whatever the frick it, at least pretend they, you know, at least pretend they do. And there's training and stuff. Jade's were basically trapped. Maybe you think a planet of kids would mean nothing. I mean, you could do whatever you want, but I've never had any freedom. I mean, I'll have even less as an adult. Cloister Jades are not even allowed to join the Im Imperial Army. Instead, we get shipped off to live in isolation. <sighs> We're forbidden to contribute genetic material to the slurry, and no paling is allowed once we mature, and for some, I don't know, bullcrap old fashioned reason that I pretty much don't understand at all. And I'll turn you, your whole future is decided in the second you hatched. People tell me that all the time that I have it lucky as a jade blood, but I don't feel lucky at all. <sighs> Oof. Yeah, you agree with Dariah that the future that she's described sounds bleak as all hell. <laughs> right? It's gonna kind of freaking suck. It's so crappy I have it good. At least, I mean, at least I don't have to start an elder, early death in my future on like a lot, a lot of low bloods. This one's so freaked up, it's not even, never gonna change and I hate it here. I just want a way out of it. Maybe when you go back to your home planet, you could take me with you. The request comes out of left field, and for a few seconds you just blink at her stupidly. Even with all the angry black makeup around her eyes, she looks just so sad. Sad and lost. You wish you had a different answer to give her, but you tell her that you can't take her back to your planet because you don't know how or when or if you're ever going to go home. You've been trying not to contemplate the future, because on the rare occasions that you do let yourself think about it, existential dread tends to take over. <laughs> Dread. Yeah, that's worth for it. The older I get, the more I realize how crappy things are. I try not to think about it, just like you. But it still hits home sometimes, and when it doesn't, don't feel like angry or rebellious. So I feel completely freaking paralyzed. This too is a familiar emotion to you. You feel like you feel for Daria, who's wandered over to the middle of the food court. And staring up through the cave in at the moons. She has her arms wrapped around her middle and her specky jewelry and jagged haircut and big black boots. Don't make anything to look her less small. I wish you knew what to say to make her feel better. You've done a decent job at cheering up dejected trolls in the past, but it's hard when you're feeling so crappy about your own situation. You wonder something about how things could still get better and you never know what the future holds, yada yada yada, and she looks at you like she. Knows just how hollow your words are. Ugh, sounds like Bronya. 
Next, you're gonna tell me how important Jade Bloods are and what honor all this responsibility is. <laughs> Give me a break. Optimism is for chumps and losers. Keeping grubs safe doesn't matter. The continuation of our species doesn't matter. None of us, nothing, nothing any of us do freaking matters. <sighs> you feel your blood getting hot to match the steel that's now in her voice. A sick party you find this train of thought a lot more viscerally satisfying than trying to cheer her up. Which wasn't working anyway. Stand for feet and so does she. I can't believe anyone bothers trying to carve out a real life on this worthless crap hole of a planet. There's no point. We might as well all be cold. In the back of your mind, you know you should be disagreeing with some of this, but you were too much to care. Maybe to write is right. Maybe nothing matters. That's freaking right. M maybe I should just quit. You falter in your righteous fury. Maybe quitting is going a bit far. Maybe the high bloods that go around causing death and destruction just because they have a prey to you. Uh, this is starting to sound not so great. What doesn't sound great about it? Who cares if I don't want to be a caretaker and just instead burn crap down for fun? There's no point to anything, so what does it matter? Who cares? Daria's hands are bald in the fists and her teeth are bared as she glares at you. You open your mouth, may I tell her that you care, even though that would possibly sound trite. But no words come out. She scoffs and turns away from you and jumps up onto a crumbly looking cafeteria table. You know what? Frick this. Friendship is as pointless as everything else. She picks up one of the chairs and you really need to stop being surprised at the strength of even the scrawniest looking trolls and hurls it at the nearest fast food stall. <sighs> you thought it was just a random throw at first, but it appears she was aiming with precision for the crushes into a tank of fuel connected to the oven. You're not sure how alternative and cooking technology works, but it still explodes a huge green tinged fireball and knocks you on your butt. Whoa, this looks kind of like uh, the craft with just this look. You watch in horror from your ass level vantage point as the flames lick into the restaurants on either side. Explosions happening around the food court like dominoes. Daria stands on a table in the middle of it, unmoving even as fire threatens to envelop her. This is probably the only place I like on this whole planet. So good riddance. It's gone the most thing you care about. With all the dust and debris, the small is coming down fast around you. you. Desperately want to get Daria out of there, but you desperately don't want to save yourself more. I mean, you do want to save yourself more. And Daria doesn't look like she wants to be saved. Make a feeble attempt going over to her and gra try to grab her around the waist to get her out of there, but she kicks you hard in the chest. Her steel toed combat boots send you flying, and it's supposed to get zero days since you last broke your ribs. As used to as plain as you are, it still takes you a second of lying on the floor in agony before you push yourself up to look back at the food court. A wall of fire now separates you from the tables inside. You can't see Daria anymore. Your heart sinks. Maybe she'll come to her senses and pull herself up out of danger and escape through the caved-in roof. Maybe she'll get out some other way. You stumble to your feet, half thinking that maybe you can find water or a fire extinguisher in some part of the small that isn't burning up. But smoke chokes your lungs and in panic your human survival instincts take over. You dash down the escalator as mall infrastructure starts to crumble around you. And you don't want to abandon Daria, but it's all you can do to get your own sorry self out of there alive. Oh, damn. Thankfully, I do have Pandora's Rewinding Magic since she's on a little vacay. Alright, let's try this one. <clears throat> Here's the thing, your worries and best adventures have come to you, actually, ha what ha what ha actually happened to you, but you just let it be spontaneous and just let crap happen. Adventures and coolness are both hard things to plan. So what are you suggesting that we just... wander? Her derisive tone makes you hesitate, but well, yes, that's exactly what you're suggesting. Daria gives you a long, considering look. You hold your breath, and then she shrugs. Okay, whatever, sure. Not like I have anything better to do. Let's just go. You meander through the well-maintained cerulean streets, heading downtown. This seems like a good opportunity to get you know your new to get to know your new potential friend. 
He started by asking her some fairly simple questions. Ugh. How am I? Gee, I don't know. I'm forbidden to leave the stupid caverns as a, and as a jade blood. I look forward to all all but look forward to the life of being forbidden to do things. How do you think I am? Okay, you try to walk that one back a little. It sounds like Daria is unsatisfied with the jade blood setup. <laughs> That's one way to put it. You also say I'm unsatisfied with like the whole setup of my species. You've been here for a while now, but don't tell me you haven't noticed every part of our society is transparent bullshit. I'm glad to run because Daria is right. You've been around for a while, and that means you'd know enough to know that if the wrong people overheard this kind of talk, you'd both be called on the spot. But everyone here seems distracted by their own nonsense. Seriously. You see that, yeah, you know there's a certain bullshit aroma. Yeah, it all stinks. No one has any kind of real future except for the highest of the high bloods. I've actually heard that things pretty much suck for them, too. Some might say that purple bloods are the most disprivileged class of them all. <sighs> He's gonna continue to not comment on that one. Instead, you point out that being a jade blood, the right has a purpose beyond just growing up to become fodder in the Imperial Army. Like you've heard other trolls mention, surely that counts as a real future. Ugh. Don't get me started. If I to say I'm not exactly happy about the purpose that I supposedly have, it's not like a purpose that was arbitrarily assigned to me. But it's not like I have a choice, and rebellion in any sort of real way would put me in danger of a calling. Life here is pretty much hopeless. Damn! You wish you had a good counter argument, but you want to give her some words of comfort, but. What can you even say? Daria's right. Shit's real. At least you're honest. Thanks for not bullshitting me. You know, Lanera said you're good to talk about real stuff. I guess she was right. That's. Huh. You're surprised that Lanera's going around talking about you, saying positive things even. But you're more surprised that Daria is bringing her up in a non derivative context. You didn't know that Daria and Lanera were close? Ugh. No, gross. I hate Lanera. Not in a romantic way. Or, well, anyway, never mind. Daria looks embarrassed and flustered and also pissed at you. There's a kind of subject to wake him out, hopeless everything is, but still, you don't want this friendship to sour. As you're scanning your useless brain for a tactful subject change, you're saved by the footsteps of a new troll approaching. Oh, Tizius! Hey, girl, what's up? As luck would have it, you know this troll. It's Tizius. Which makes sense because your meandering has taken you and Daria close to Tizius' fair book hive. <laughs> oh, it's you. Whoa, what are you doing here? Never mind, I don't even need to ask. You're obviously making friends with his jade blood. Searching for some dumb shit to know out. Don't let me keep you. Tizius looks as exa exhausted as you remember. You don't want her to go just yet because it's been a while since you've seen her and you're always eager for an opportunity to catch up with a friend. Especially one of the less murderous ones. Then you know Soraya eyeing Tizius' mug of unidentifiable, unidentifiable liquid and an, occur an idea occur occur occurs to you. Get excited! Bouncing a little on the balls of your feet as you introduce Tizius and Daria to each other. He explained to Tizius with a meaningful look that you hoped that she'll interpret correctly. That you and Daria were just conversing about the more unjust aspects of alternative society and how hopeless everything seems to be. What do you mean, the more unjust aspects? Does alternative society have aspects that are not unjust? I'm sweeps into studying our legal system, and I haven't found any. Daria makes a muffled sound that could be a laugh. You make your meaningful look more meaningful. Doesn't Tithes remember the conversation she had with you about justice in the shitty system? The the words that possibly futile work to try and improve things someday? Being? Tithes just squints at you, and it takes a long slurp from a mug. Which reminds you, I need to take a drink real quick. <sighs> Much better. Right. 
Yeah, I remember. You wave your hands around. Now we're talking. <clears throat> you wave your hands around. Now we're talking. Tizis is one of the few friends that you've made that seemed to not only that crap was fricked, but wanted to dedicate yourself to unfricking the crap as much as she could. Uh, of course, many of your dear friends try to make the world be a little better in various clumsy, interpersonal, direct, distinctly alternative ways. I think of Chixie striving for her music even when it pits her against high bloods. The baffling ways that Connell and Asdaja and Gallic and Degora care for each other. And her father's commitment to political. Wait. What'd you think of that guy? It's a whole show for the contest. Anyway, Tizus has a big picture mentality and because it and a cause that she believes in. And the simple fact that she hasn't completely given up on it is inspiring. Daria is struggling with feelings of despair, so maybe Tizus could talk to her about the work that she's been doing. What? No, I'm not struggling. It's whatever. I don't even care. Daria kicks at the ground sulkily. Tizius looks her over, her eyes lingering on the jade symbol on her shirt and her spiky black jewelry in his eyes. Sure, you don't care. I w went through a phase of telling myself that, too. I thought it w would make it easier to deal. But nah. Tizius pauses in front of the mug slurp, and you think she might be enjoying the opportunity to monologue a little bit. Daria huffs. Only thing that helps, and I'm not even sure that helps, is the right word for it. So find something to work on in your own little corner. Try to make crap a little less. There's nothing I can do in my corner. Pointless to pretend otherwise. Excuse me. And it goes for everyone. Like this whole system is designed to help high blood stand out and scent in every corner. One troll can't do anything against something like that. Tizis' eyebrow twitches as she stares at, Dor as, as Dor at Daria, clearly appeared to be interrupted. Uh oh, this could be going better. Oh, well, no crap. What do you take me for? I'm not saying it only takes to standing up and fighting for what's right or something like stupid like that. It's obviously a surefire way to get cold. And what are you saying? How do you even, how can you even know what ever piddly little action you're taking will change anything? I can't tell you the future, dumbass. No one can give you a guarantee that any kind of action taken will be ultimately effective. You have to decide for yourself that's worth it to try anyway. Why do you think it's worth it when everything around us confirms that nothing will ever change? I can't believe you're calling me a dumbass when that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Tizius looks like she's about to throw the contents of her mug in Darius' face. No one should probably follow up with the mug itself. This isn't the conversation you hope for at all. He said then before things get any more heated. You tell Tizius that you're sorry and that you didn't flog her down so that her ideas could get crapped on. Turn to Daria, who is staring at both of you with a defiant look on her face and a stubborn set to her jaw. This kid, she's so dead set on rebelling that I guess anyone who tries to tell her anything with even the faintest whip of, of authority. <clears throat> you really thought that all this that maybe all that attitude could be channeled into something productive that could also help her feel better and possibly even give her a sense of purpose. You're not mad, just disappointed. Ugh. Don't give me that look. Okay, I was just stating my opinion. But I guess I could have been less of a bone bulge about it. You possibly was surprised that Daria more or less apologized. Tizius looks mollified too. This stuff makes it just, just makes me so angry. <sighs> angry and sad and helpless. Like, I don't even know what to do with myself when I really have to think about it. Bingo, unfortunately. Feel the same way. <laughs> I don't think there's any getting around this helplessness. But what I was trying to say is that we're working on something that might help fix someday makes that feeling a little less powerful. So what you're saying is that it's just about making yourself feel better? 
Well, when you put it like that, it sounds bad. I believe I'm working on things that might affect change someday, even if I'm not around to see it. But also, yeah, most of the time it helps me sleep at night too. Can you tell Daria is a bit disappointed by this? Like she doesn't that she says political rebellion can go hand in hand with making the rebels feel good about themselves. You point out that whether or not Tizia feels good about her work doesn't make the work itself any less effective. Yeah, in the end, the universe just doesn't care about how I feel. I'm just one troll trying to do the right thing. Or at least the okay thing. But for its own sake, even if it might be ultimately futile. What the hell are we gonna do on this crap of an Alternia? You got me there. I'm bored all the time, there really isn't anything cool to do down in the caverns. I guess during the downtime of my training, I could, you know, I don't know, help you out maybe. Not that I have anything to offer than the book I have in the Jade Cloisters. Access to them might really help my research, actually. G give me your number and we could talk. Is it your imagination or does Tizia look like a smidgen less tired? The bags are under her eyes, less baggy, and her back a little straighter. And you think the corners of Daria's lips might be very slightly corked up. Daria turns her possibly a smile from Tizia to you. That's cool, I guess. At least not so bad. I don't know if it kept sound cool. But I guess they just keep hanging out until more crap happens. You know Daria well enough by now to recognize it for this, the ringing endorsement that it is. You're about to happily agree when Tizia pipes up. <laughs> I'm just heading home from studying, but I'm not tired yet. If you wanted a third wheel to drag along. Three way friendship combo bob victory. Ah, yeah. Jade and Teal. My favorite combo. Well, that, my friends. <sighs> was Daria's Route, of Volume 17. And I'm feeling a little melancholy myself. Because knowing this is the la near next to last episode. Well, until Wave 2 of the Friendship comes out, if there is a Wave 2. Because I know Wave 2 of the Troll Call will have, will have um, Sea Dwellers in there from what I hear. But uh, the last Friends then, it'll have. Barzili twins. Actually, the Salil twins. The whole thing. The Salil twins, and our other favorite Jade Blood, the first ever transgender troll. I might add, Lanka. That's how I pronounce it anyway. Or Lanka. I must have to say Lanka. But no, we get twins and a badass-looking, beautiful vampire. In our final episode, for now. I don't know if Wet Pumpkin's going to create another round of Friends Tim, but if I do, I will be there to play it once it drops. So until then, until the final two episodes of this wave of trolls, you know what to do. Hit it like button with a big old bibbity bobbity boop, and I'll see you all in the final chapters. Mwah! Stay magical, my friends. And. I'm just speechless right now, y'all. I'm just, I'm just gonna take a moment, all right? I'll see y'all soon.